Hey guys, Mike Fulsame here. I'm gonna show you something that I did with AI that you can do. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna take a look at my screen and walk you through it. All right, welcome to another Groove.ai case study. In this case study, I'm gonna show you how to generate better mid-journey prompts. Now, before we continue, I wanna remind you that right now, Groove.ai is in production and we're asking you to be a backer of the project. And you can get more information about that right underneath this video. And yes, we're offering a lifetime deal. Again, you can check that out right underneath this video. But since Groove.ai won't be ready until September 1st, we've decided to add value by giving you case studies for some AI tools that you can use right now. Today, we're talking about Midjourney. Midjourney uses a text to image system. I'm gonna be demoing that for you in just a minute. The problem, if you're like me or most people, it's very difficult to write a good prompt to get what you want. But don't worry, you're you're in luck because I'm going to show you a magic solution that you can do to put into ChatGPT to turn any boring prompt into a magical prompt. All right, so let's jump in. The first thing you want to do is you want to get to ChatGPT. If you don't have one, create an account. It's free. Now I have a plus account, so that allows me to use GPT-4, so I'm going to load that up. But it doesn't matter if you have the free account, you'll be using GPT-3.5 and it'll work identically. So leave it here if you're a free member. If you're a plus user like me and you're paying the 20 bucks a month, which I recommend, move it to chat GPT-4. GPT-4 does get slightly better results than 3.5. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is Midjourney. It works inside of Discord. Discord is an app like Slack. It's very popular for communications, especially in the Twitch and gaming community. But more and more companies are using it as a forum for their members. The way that most of us use Facebook groups, this is becoming more popular. Now, if you wanna learn how you can install Midjourney, don't worry, it's very simple. Right underneath the video you're watching right now, there are some resources that you can click that will bring you right to this document that you see here. Don't worry about anything you're seeing on this page right now. You're simply gonna paste that into Midjourney and I'm gonna show you in about 30 seconds. But what I wanted to show you first was here in step one, you can click right here. This will open you up into a Google document that has everything you need to know about Midjourney. There's a video here on how to install it for a beginner plus step-by-step -step instructions. If you're a paid user of Midjourney, which I recommend, at least until Groove.ai comes out, this will show you how to install Midjourney on your own private Discord server so you don't have to see all of the other images people are making. They don't get to see your images and your images don't get lost in a flood of hundreds of images being done every minute. If you do the free version, you'll see what I'm talking about. It can be very distracting, and for a few bucks a month, I decided to go with the paid version. On top of that, I get a lot more images every month, but you do you. Underneath that, here's a video that shows you the basics of how to make an image with Midjourney, plus some step-by-step -step instructions. Underneath that, I gave you an image with my best settings, and there's a little video that shows you pretty much how the advanced settings in Midjourney works if you wanna use them. And then over here, I gave you a bonus video. Now I've locked in a timestamp for this video for seven minutes and five seconds. That's where you wanna to skip to. This talks about Midjourney's describe tool. I'm gonna to read it. This allows users to upload any image and receive text prompts that describe the image. So what that means, if you see an image that you like anywhere on the web, you can now use their describe feature as outlined in that video, and it will give you a prompt that can replicate that you could use on your own and it would be royalty free. All right, that's it for now. Let's talk about how Midjourney images work and how we can make them better. So I'm gonna close this document here. Okay, let's go over to Discord. Now remember, I gave you a video that shows you how to do this. So I'm just gonna go and assume that you've watched that video and you know how to do that. I'm gonna hit backslash to bring up the prompts. I'm gonna click on the imagine prompt. As you can also see here, there's the describe prompt that I was just talking about. But we're gonna go with the imagine prompt. And I'm gonna paste in here a man and a child in a bakery in the style of Norman Rockwell. I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna let it bake that image. It's gonna take about 30 to 45 seconds. I'm gonna pause the video and we'll be right back. Okay, right now you see it's at 0% and now it's at 15%, 62%, 93% and it's complete. To look at the images, I can simply click on here and then click open in a browser. And I have to tell you, these images are okay, but not in my opinion, in the true style of Norman Rockwell. So I'm gonna close this and now we're gonna go and create a magical prompt that you could use over and over again to get even better images. So now I'm gonna go back to this document, which is underneath the video that you're watching right now. And then I'm simply going to copy paste everything in here one at a time to ChatGPT. It's that simple. Ready? Let's get started. I'm gonna take this first prompt, I'm not really too concerned about its replies, and I'm just gonna hit paste and go. Now I wanna rename this Better Mid Journey Prompts. All right, 12 more prompts to go. I'm gonna take this here and I'm just gonna copy and I'm gonna paste 
I have this little thing because I don't want to waste tokens here. Wait, just answer with red. So that's why all of these say that. So we're just going to go to the next one here. I'm simply going to paste this in here like that. We're going to continue with this. And now we're going to do the next one. Basically, what we're doing is I went to Midjourney and I got all of the rules. I'm teaching ChatGPT how Midjourney works. This is like magic. So let's continue. I'm going to go to prompt six. We're halfway done now. It's this simple. You're simply going to do everything that I'm doing right here. You don't have to worry about what it responds with. We're going to go here to prompt seven. OK, now I will give you some examples. OK, we have to wait for that to finish. I'll hit enter. We're going to go back, get prompt eight. We're almost done. I'm now going to paste that in here. We're going to go get prompt nine. OK, great. Do you understand how mid journey works? Yes or no? Now it should say yes when we're done here. Okay, let's see if it says yes or no. It should say yes. Great, it answers yes, I understand. So now we're just gonna give it a few more prompts to continue to learn. Great, here's a few more examples, just like this. We're gonna paste that in there. And then finally, over here, one more big prompt like this, and then we are done. Let's just wait for this to finish. Okay, paste this really big one in there. Let that do its job. Okay, now I recommend if you go through, you're gonna see what's going on is we're telling it to use different types of cameras and lenses and aperture and settings and f-stops and time of day and all of these different things to create these rich, beautiful prompts. So now, watch what's gonna happen. We're gonna go back in, take this last prompt right here, and I'm going to tell it now, finally, to act as a professional photographer. Your goal is to capture the essence of the subject matter in an impressive way. Describe the perfect image in terms of lighting and composition and subject matter and what type of camera and setup and equipment will be used to achieve the shot. Consider the time of day, weather, and any other environmental factors that could affect the shot, but mostly take inspiration from the formatting from the example prompts. Don't copy them, but use the same format. Now, I said rule never end in a period. The correct way to end is V5, not V.5, because if it puts a period here, which sometimes it, you're going to get an error inside of Discord, I know how to fix, but I didn't want you to think the whole thing didn't work because it put a stupid period at the end. But let's get to the magical prompt. As you can see here, I'm telling it the first prompt I want you to create is a man and a child in a bakery in the style of Norman Rockwell. This is the same one we used before, but watch what it's gonna do now. Okay, you can see now it's creating a much better prompt than simply a man and a child in a bakery in the style of Norman Rockwell. Now it's saying, a heartwarming and nostalgic scene of a man and a child in a cozy bakery, reminiscent of the classic Norman Rockwell painting, full of warmth, intricate details, and a sense of storytelling. The photograph captures the tender moment when a man, likely the child's father or grandfather, teaches the young child the art of baking. With the bustling activity of the bakery serving as a backdrop, the composition is carefully arranged to emphasize the interaction between the two characters, while also showcasing the charming, vintage-inspired decor of the bakery. To achieve this shot, a Canon EOS 5D Mark V, etc., etc., etc. Can you see now the difference between what we put in Mid Journey before that looked like this? A child in a bakery. Look, we don't have the imagination to write all of that stuff, especially when we're in a hurry. But now I can simply take this prompt like this with telling it the camera, the shutter speed and watch the magic that's going to happen now. I'm going to type in imagine and I'm just going to now hit paste right there where it says prompt and I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to let it bake. And like I said, it takes about 45 seconds to a minute. So let's just wait. All right, at 15%, we got our first image. 62% of the way done, 93% of the way done. Okay, now we are finished. Now let's take a look at the original one that we had before where you're seeing this here, right? It's not quite Norman Rockwell. I mean, look, these things aren't bad at all, right? And look, art is subject, but now let's look at the one that we just did. This is the new one, okay? I'm gonna click on here. I'm going to open this in the browser. Now, if you were to ask me, I think these look much better than the previous ones. There's so much more warmth and care and love and detail that's going on in here compared to the previous one. So when you're done, whichever one you like, what you do inside of uh, Discord is you simply can upscale one to version three or version four, or you can get new versions of these are variants of one, two, three and four. 
but I'm gonna choose, let me see. I'm gonna go with version three right here. One, two, three. And I'm gonna take version three. I'm gonna click upscale. That's gonna take about 10 seconds to fully bake into a nice 4K version. And there we go. Just like that, I have a nice 4K version. As you can see, it takes a while for it to load inside of my browser. Okay, but we're not done. Now I wanna show you how you make prompts in the future. What you're simply going to do is take this anytime don't ever delete this ChatGPT thread because now all you'll ever need to do is come into your better mid-journey prompt and simply type in generate a prompt of A. And now you can get rid of the colon and the parentheses there. And let's come up with a prompt. Okay, here's what I came up with. Generate a prompt of a man like the Fonz on a motorcycle in a street in a New York City village in the style of Happy Days. Photorealistic. I'm gonna hit enter. And let's see the magical prompt that it comes up with for me. Okay, do you see the power of ChatGPT here? It knows who the Fonz is, a Fonz-like figure with his leather jacket. Kids, if you don't remember the Fonz, then you're not in the Generation X generation like I am that grew up loving the show Happy Days. So you may not get the reference, but anybody from my generation is gonna appreciate the photo that we're about to get. Okay, it's all done. I'm gonna copy this. Okay, and as you can see, the difference between our normal prompts that we're gonna put in there will now get turned into this, and now we can get some really stunning types of images. So I'm gonna just put in my imagine prompt here. I'm gonna paste that in, and I'm gonna let it bake that, and we're gonna come back in about one minute. All right, and we're done. Let's take a look by clicking on here and then clicking on open in a browser. And here we got different versions. Man, I think this is absolutely gorgeous. This looks right out of a New York City village. I love this right here. This is just stunning. I'm going to upscale one of these and let's see, I'm gonna do this one right here. It looks like something right out of West Side Story. So let's upscale number one. All right, and there it is. We'll open that up in a browser. And now I can just right click this and save it to my hard drive and I've got this image. That's how you can create any image that you want. Now remember, once you get that prompt, you can modify some of these things here. If you want it to be less lifelike or in the style of the Avengers or Marvel Comics or Pixar, you name it, you can put that in the original prompt here or even modify some of the prompts here. So that's it, that's how you generate better mid-journey prompts. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will have more case studies for you coming up make sure to look out in your inbox so what are you still doing here click that button right underneath this video and stay tuned for more emails and more case studies about ai we'll see you soon now get ready for the power the power of groove ai become a becker of groove today